If you have ever tried to derive wind pressures using ASC7, you know that it's not an easy task. There are so many parameters, so many different equations that you need to use and all these different procedures. That's why a lot of engineers rely on spreadsheet templates to be able to get the wind pressures and move on with design. But today, we're going to go over the quickest way to derive wind pressures using ASC7. Let's go. We're going to solve our example problem using ASC 716. And chapter 27 and chapter 28 are the chapters where we have the wind load procedures, derivation procedures for the main wind force resisting system of a building. Chapter 27 is the directional pr procedure. We have parts one and two. And chapter 28, is the envelope procedure parts one and two as well. We're going to use the quickest method, which is in chapter 28, the envelope procedure and part two. We go here and we find the steps that we need to follow to design using this method. Now, pay attention to all the limitations. So this is really a method that is very quick, but it's to encompass only low rise buildings, simple diaphragm buildings, regular shape with no torsion and you may wonder well of course there are so many limitations that's why it's the quickest method you're right but at the same time let's look around and see how many low-rise buildings we have that are regular shaped just rectangular a lot of residences right so this method was really created to encompass all the simple buildings that we have out there that don't really need all the complicated steps and all the minute details that the other methods offer. So this is just a more basic method. So now that we understand what method we're going to use, let's see the problem we have at hand. The problem states that we have a two-story building located in West Palm Beach, Florida, and has the following wind load parameters. And the problem gives us all these different parameters that we'll need for our equations. The question is, determine the wall and roof pressures in main wind force resisting system, not components and cladding. Sketch all load cases to be incorporated in an analysis software to design the building diaphragms and shear walls. So basically, the question here is, you have this building, you see the footprint is 90 feet by 120 feet, and the height is 25 feet. If you're given a task at work, for example, or at school, to generate all the wind pressures for this building, but not only generate the pressures, but also think through all the load cases that you need to calculate to be able to actually analyze the shear walls, the diaphragms, the foundations, the building stability, all that goes into the main wind force resisting system. As for the given parameters, we know that we're going to use the envelope, the envelope procedure, part two. The roof slope is flat, essentially, it's less than five degrees. The risk category is two. The basic wind speed is 170 miles per hour. And this is actually the basic wind speed for West Palm Beach, Florida, and for risk category two. The exposure is C. The least horizontal dimension is 90 feet, the mean roof height is 25 feet, and we're just assuming that there are no hills nearby, so the topographic factor, KZT, is one. We'll go back to ASC 716 to look at the steps. We're going to go to figure 28.5-1, and we're going to find out the design pressure P sub S30 for all the different zones that we would have. This is the figure I was referencing, and you see all the different zones that we would have for our building. Our case is slightly different because we don't have a gable roof. We have a flat roof with a slope of zero to five degrees. But in essence, we have a very similar condition that case A is when the wind is blowing this way here, focused on this corner, and we have zones A through H. Case B is when the wind is blowing, in this case, parallel to the ridge, and we have still the same zones. And you can see 
how the wind is higher near the corner and it's also higher right at the wall to roof intersection but also closer to the corner because the envelope procedure really focuses on blowing the wind for case A and B in this towards the, the corner of the building and you essentially rotate the building so that you blow the wind in all four corners. This is part two of the envelope procedure but if we look at part one and we're going to go up above we have a very similar condition here that you see for load case A we have all these different load cases within load case A right the wind blows in this corner here and you have all these different zones if the wind blows in this other corner here it would be this other case likewise now we have the wind blowing on this corner which is the third load case and then we have the wind blowing on this other corner which is right here the fourth load case so if we are to analyze the shear walls diaphragms and whatnot we need to run all these load cases for the building the same we have for load case b now the difference is that the direction of the load now is parallel to the ridge so you see that the wind is blowing on this face here it's not blowing directly on this face whereas if you go to load case a the wind is blowing here on this face and then you rotate from all four corners of the building now that we got the load cases out of the way let's go back to our example so for our case the zones are slightly different be because we are in part two not part one so we have zones a through h but we still have case a when the wind blows perpendicular to the ridge in the case of a gable roof and case b when the wind is blowing parallel to that ridge so to get each pressure really all that we need to do is solve for this equation here we have this factor lambda and then kzt and then our pressure this simplified design wind pressure p sub s30 which is for exposure b and also at height 30 feet because not all buildings will be this case that's why we have this lambda factor which is an adjustment for the actual building height and also for the exposure that we have so with that being said let's now find p sub s30 for our building we go to this table here to find p sub s30 and we see all the different zones for the horizontal pressures a through d and for the vertical pressures e through h as well as overhang pressures in which case we don't have for our specific building we know that our roof slope is zero to five degrees but our basic wind speed is not 85 it's 170 so let's move all the way down to 170 right here so with this information we have all of our pressures for our building let's now see what the next step is so here i copied over all the pressures that we have p sub s30 for all the zones including overhang even though it's not included in our problem the next step is to determine the adjustment factor for building height the lambda factor so let's go back to ASC 7 in the same figure we can find our lambda factor for 25 feet mean roof height and also exposure C our lambda is 1.35 now for step 3 we just need to calculate P sub s which is lambda times kzt times the pressures we just found so I built this table again for all of our zones and we find the actual adjusted pressures for, for our building. Note that I put not applicable for zones B and D as well as for the roof overhangs since the problem didn't mention we had overhangs. For zones B and D, we actually don't have those zones. If we go back to ASC 716, I'll show you why zones b and d are really present in load case a for when we have a gable roof and it is the horizontal pressure at the vertical projection of the gabled roof portion if our slope is zero to five degrees this the height of this pressure here for zones b and d 
is going to be very, very negligible. That's why I just included it as not applicable because it shouldn't make any difference in our design. I could see how I would include zones B and D if this was an actual building, a prefabricated metal building, for example, that maybe this vertical dimension is one foot or two feet, wherever that is, that is actually going to pick up more pressure. But if our roof is truly a flat roof with just tapered insulation on top, our slope is virtually zero and there shouldn't be any significant pressure getting picked up by zones B and D. The next step is to calculate the width that we will need to use for all these different zones. And that's the dimension A and also dimension 2A. A is the smaller of 10% of the least building width or 40% of the building height, of the mean roof height. We also have a minimum value that we need to check against and that is the A minimum is the greater of 4% of the least horizontal dimension of the building B or 3 feet in which case if we plug the numbers in here we get 3.6 and our, our A is greater than that so we are we are good and then we have our dimension 2A which is 18 feet. Now to finish it off we got all of our pressures we just need to apply them so we have case A and case B. For case A, we have these wall pressures here that is higher at the corner at the dimension 2A, which would be 18 feet. And also at the roof, we have zones E, F, H, and G. I have these double arrows here to indicate that they could be positive or negative, but that's really for a gable roof. If we go up above, we will see that all these pressures are negative. So in our case, we have suction for all these pressures. And then A and C are positive pressures going towards the wall. For case B, it's a similar condition with the exception that 2A is only for the roof and the dimension A is for the wall. I know it looks a little bit strange to have these A and 2A dimensions, but that's how it is described in ASE 716. That's how the figure plays out the values for A and 2A to incorporate all the corners appropriately based on the testing that was done for the envelope procedure. And then I put a note here that we need to repeat cases A and B for all corners. This would generate in total eight load cases. So in this case here, we are blowing the wind in the long wall of the building focusing on this corner here the second load case for case a2 let's say it would be the same condition with the exception that we're looking at this corner so you can just mirror this pressure to, to the other corner so this would be a and then c would be on this side and on, over here would be e and f now we can mirror this towards the other side when the wind is blowing from the back of the building here. That's how we get the four load cases for case A, and then you would get the four load cases for case B in a similar manner. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are many other methods to derive wind loads in ASC7. The more complicated the building is, the more complicated the method is. Let me know if you want me to go over these other methods and solve other example problems. I also left a link in the description below that you can use to download this example in PDF format. I'll see you next time.